First of all, thank you for agreeing to speak with us. You know, the Governor Murphy called this agreement, he called it, quote, fair and reasonable. What do you call it? I feel good. And I'm, I think that we're ready. That's, that's what I see it as. I see this settlement as hopeful and that we're ready. We're ready for a culture change. We're ready for the restorative justice. We're ready to present and implement more reforms and personally ready to help survivors in Hudson County have an opportunity to find justice. Well, let's talk about that because it's a $1 million settlement. Of course, there are legal fees to be paid. What's the plan for the remainder of those funds? So the $600,000 will be going to the Waterfront Project, which is a nonprofit in Hudson County that provides legal assistance and counseling and advice for low-income people and families in Hudson County. One of their guiding principles is justice for all, and I felt that that was perfect for for this initiative because through my own experience as a person with immense privilege and access to people in power it was still so difficult to pursue justice particularly um, on the civil side and most survivors are not able to go through that process and so these funds will provide the opportunity for people to go through the legal system as I did. Part of the settlement requires this so-called a restorative justice meeting mm -hmm. between yourself and Mr. Alvarez, um, in addition to a sexual harassment class that Mr. Alvarez will be required to take. Correct. Was that something that you personally requested? And what do you hope to get from that? The restorative justice process is something that I personally requested. Restorative justice is a model that is used in other places in the country and other countries as well, use it much more extensively than we do here in the United States. And it is a process that provides the opportunity for healing. You find a trained facilitator that we would both agree on that work with us individually. And at such time that we're ready, we would meet. There's different models. What I think is likely is to do more of a conferencing model where, whether it's in person or virtual at this point, where we meet with our loved ones and our supports and you have the opportunity to acknowledge hurt, to acknowledge hurt and to discuss how you're going to move forward. That's the restoration. What does that look like? It has been shown to provide a lot more satisfaction and healing for survivors and I think I can speak for myself and, and maybe others when I say that that acknowledgement of, of hurt, the, the I'm sorry, is a big part of what you're looking for. And so I hope that we can create this process and then use it as a model for other survivors in New Jersey moving forward. Has that healing process started for you? Often we think of these settlements as the end of a case, um, but that's the legal side of it. Mm -hmm. What has it been like for you? It's, it's been a journey. You know, it's been three years at this point, and certainly I had to come to a certain place of healing in order to move forward with the civil justice side, in order to be able to tell my story publicly. But it... It's not over. It certainly in many ways has just begun. I think that that is why the civil statute of limitations, which was expanded just about a year ago, is so important because it takes a long time to be ready. This is a difficult process. It's retelling your story over and over again. It is um, finding it questioned. But I do want people to know that silence did not serve me and it, it, it did not protect me. And I found that coming forward provided great strength and healing for me. And I, I don't regret it. And I think that every reform that we've already achieved and all the reforms that I see 
that there's incredible momentum right now. The things we've already seen pass in the legislature, the hearings that Senator Loretta Weinberg has been holding, the time is now. The time is now. You've been very intricately involved with the reforms that are happening. Do you see yourself playing a more prominent role in that? Because, I mean, this was prior to this outbreak happening, this was certainly had finally kind of risen to the top of priorities mm -hmm. um, as far as lawmakers were concerned. Do you see your role changing at all in how the rest of that plays out? I, I plan to be involved in the reforms and I think that the greater awareness and we, we won't lose that momentum. And we may be in a pandemic now, but those who are vulnerable are still more vulnerable. There's people at home with, in domestic abuse yeah. situations that can't escape. Can you imagine what it would be like to go to the hospital right now if you needed a rape kit? I think it just highlights that those that, who are vulnerable are, are still vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And I think that we will be able to continue the reforms and, I think that a major takeaway for me from this process is that we have some of these systems and a way in which we can improve them is to be able to hold one another accountable. I recall earlier on, um, not long after you testified, um, you had said that it was creating, coming forward was creating some barriers for you in your professional life. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, meetings that were happening without your knowledge or that you were no longer in that immediate following of this, that you were not being asked to attend. Has that changed for you and has it improved um, over the last couple of years or are you still battling with that? Look, when I listen to the other survivors testify at the hearings, the fear of retaliation is real. It's real. And coming forward is not without consequences. I, I don't pretend to say that it's easy or that things are not different because of course they are. But I, I am proud to have pushed forward. And while it's not the same, and it may never and nev may never be the same, I think that we need all hands on deck. I, we need the administration, we need the legislature, we need the judicial and prosecutorial systems in, in particular, and we, we just need everyone. I think that a lot of times we focus on the perpetrator and the victim, but there are so many of us who have an opportunity to intervene and, and hold one another accountable to make sure that, one, this is prevented. It just never happens in the first place, and two, when unfortunately it does, that we stop it in its tracks. Was there ever a moment, and I think back to that day at the State House when you had cameras following you, the room was filled with more reporters I've, than I've ever seen um, in that Senate hearing room. Was there ever a moment that there, there is pressure that comes with that, pressure um, for those who are unable to speak out or, 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 or choose not to? Was there ever a moment that you thought, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if I want to come forward with this? No. I, the incident should not have happened. The criminal justice system should have worked, and it did not. The campaign investigation should have happened. The state investigation should have happened. And when none of that did, I, again, as a person with <laughs> relatively an immense amount of privilege and access to these people in high positions. If it, if I have a hard time getting justice, imagine how difficult it is for other people. And I, I felt very strongly that when you see the Harvey Weinstein's of the world and you see people coming forward, that is not attainable for most people. And it's not attainable when all of these other systems fail to pursue justice in, in civil court. And I wanted to bring attention to, from best practices and my own personal experience, what needs to change. And I think carrying it, carrying it was oppressive for me. I don't, 
I know that not everyone can come forward and I don't want to put pressure on people to do so. But for those who are considering it, for me, it gave me great strength. And I hope that others have the opportunity to pursue justice the way that I did. Katie Brennan, thank you for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Brianna.